What is good, guys? Tony's Classics, Marlboro Benz. So we're gonna try something uh, a little bit different here today. So some of you are new here, some of you might be here since day one. So my name's Tony. This is one of Tony's Classics. We used to be known as Merc underscore 300 CE, which meant Mercedes underscore 300 CE, which is the model. Then we moved on to Marlboro Benz, but that was kind of stupid because didn't want no copyright if we got to the point which we are at today, which I'm very thankful for. So that's why we are now Tony's Classics. All right, so I'm pretty overwhelmed to be honest because I've been wanting to do this for a very, very long time. It's a spin on a podcast style, but I don't want to make it just car related. I kind of want to do everyday stuff, but at the same time, I think I picked a good location. We will have everybody's car, not everybody, but you know, whoever pulls up for the podcast, hit me up. So for instance, my car will be here. I will be sitting in front of the car and kind of vice versa. So today it's just me. So I got me talking about my 1991 Mercedes-Benz 300CE Marlboro edition. Got the neighbors, wave hi. So the big question is, why Marlboro? And honestly, this is why we have to do it in a podcast, because needed to be a little bit of a story for you guys. We're approaching five years of ownership. So to give you some more background information, I'm 23 years old. So five years ago, quick math, I would have been like 18, you know? 17, 18, that era. And this is a pretty, pretty hefty car for that age. I mean, yeah, overseas, sure, these were the, the thing to get. But here in Canada, that's some more background information I'm from Canada. You wouldn't be caught really driving this as a 17, 18 year old. You would want something a little bit more reliable, get you from A to B a lot better. Sounds pretty nice if you could hear that. Okay. Just gotta be safe, you know? I don't mind the burbles. This guy's just going in one gear. Okay, anyways. Kinda lost their train of thought there, but that's kinda what I'm getting at. Like, this is a very long story of a five year journey, but it also gets back to the question, why Marlboro? So, my first car when I got into the car scene was a CLA 250 Mercedes Benz 2016. It was our second car in the family, so I was very, very grateful to be able to have the opportunity to have that car at such a young age. I believe we got it maybe a couple months after I got my G2, so I would have been almost 17 at the time with a brand new Mercedes, which is any kid's dream. So essentially, I started joining crews. I joined uh, Northside Crew. Beautiful, beautiful crew, beautiful guys. They showed me what it was like. We made it on the news a couple times, you know, but eventually everybody just grows up and grows old. So that kind of happened where everybody just had life. They were doing their own thing day to day to day, and I was still young, but everyone else was at least five years on me, let's say. So I could understand where they're coming from. It was more of a, when they had free time rather than, you know, what are you doing after school? <sighs> so joined Northside crew with the CLA. I was in the crew for about, let's say a year or two, probably a good year, o over a year, 100%, 100% over a year. I'm just trying to think back. This was a while ago. You gotta remember, this was five years ago. So, uh, yeah, I joined the crew, but at the time, the CLA was a new platform. So there was barely any parts available for it. Like, 
they didn't make no eBay kits that I could just throw on it and call it a day at the time. It was like if I wanted a carbon fiber front lip, 600 bucks easily, easily. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not doing that. At the time, we still leased the car. I assumed we would have just gave it back after four years. That's a, that's a whole nother story that we'll talk about. But essentially, when the time came, I realized that the CLA staying stock, like it doesn't, nothing can be done. Pretty sure I had it for a good two years. Might've been capping when I said one year. But then the idea of Marlboro came to my mind and there was this gentleman, which I think he was in Toronto, I'm not sure, but it was a S2000. Some of you might know this and I hope he watches the video too. It was an S2000, had a Marlboro livery, and this would have been in 2017. Yeah, I remember it. And I remember like thinking like, wow, like I wanna make my CLA into a Marlboro livery. Start thinking about it some more. Didn't really make sense, to be honest. Like, it would've went hard. Like now that I'm thinking about it, like imagine like a CLA, white rims, get the carbon wing on the back. Would've been pretty icy if you can imagine that car. But it wasn't right. It didn't, it didn't stick with me, you know, like, that's like, I think, I, yeah, I made the right decision, 100%. I, I, I don't even regret the decision I made because when it came time to do it, time to actually make the decision, obviously I'm giving up the luxury of a brand new reliable vehicle and I'm switching over to a, I guess it would have been 29 year old car at the time. Right now it is a 33 year old car. So yeah, 29 year old car at the time, you know. But a big motivating factor was, I think the year was 2017 as well. In the summertime, me and my family took a trip overseas to Lebanon. We were there for, let's say maybe two months. But I fell in love with the European old Arab culture. Obviously, I still have it at home and did to my somewhat day to day, but when you're fully immersed in that environment, in that culture, it's just, that's, that's you, that's, that's your family, that's your heritage, you know? If I, so, my cousins had 190Es, they had the 400Es, they had, you name it, like they had the, the W123 taxis, they had S classes. They had from ranging from like not even new like 2005 to like 80s to 60s to 70s I saw it all from three speeds to four speeds just the modifications they got there don't even get me started like they have access to all types of body kits all types of wheels all types of parts to swap it like it's a dime a dozen there and I'm just like sitting back and I'm like holy fuck like this is the car this is exactly what I need in Canada this will, and I obviously I was a little depressed leaving everyone because the last time I saw them prior to that would have been seven years ago. So after that, you never know when you're really going to see people again. Um, it's unfortunate, but seven years ago, a lot of my relatives passed away w within that seven years. So by the time I went back, everything was different. People were grown, people were married and it's just completely different cultures and everything. It's just, it's just like that. And they're all married and they have kids and you're just like, holy shit, we're here in Canada still in school. So I really wanted that, that culture at home with me every day to remember. Remember everybody. Remember all the good times. Remember the, the future. Make sure everybody has good faith and, you know, praise and whatnot. So essentially, after my trip, I kind of came to the conclusion that I wanted an old Mercedes in Canada. Give me one second. So make sure the camera's still recording because we're a one-man show. Awesome. So I think I forgot to mention this, but in the future, I am gonna get mic set up. So when I do have people here, we will both have mics so that we could adjust the audio after, blah, blah, blah. Multiple camera angles, I am sorry. We only have 
one camera angle today and that's going to be this angle. In the future, I would like to have multiple angles where maybe one person controls the camera, another one will be panned on me and another one on the guests and one just wide of the whole scene. Like, look at this. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Okay, anyways, where were we? So, we just... We just left Lebanon, wanting to come back to Canada, and I started my hunt. Obviously, it wasn't a right away process, but this was pre-COVID, you know, cars were low price. You could buy a nice, I, I, I have a couple cars in mind that I'm looking to get, and five years ago when I priced them out, it would have cost me about 30K just to get those bunch of cars. Now it's gonna cost me at least 60K to get those cars. So that's okay, that's okay. So essentially we got back, started my hunt. I saw a lot of beautiful cars, beautiful cars. I think every single one of them was under $10,000 and that's 10,000 Canadian dollars. So that's like, I don't know, let's say seven, seven grand. Everything was under 7,000 US. I'm like, wow. So I started looking at 190Es cause that's honestly the only platform I knew. I know I had the CLA, but never really considered myself a car guy. I was always mostly into the car, let's say car enthusiast in a way, like maybe collector. Yeah, I can do everything that you see on this Mercedes, like, but at the same time, I mean, I wouldn't at the end of the day, if it came down to it, if I have time, like I'll enjoy putting stuff on fixing stuff, but like the electrical, I'm not touching, internals, what can I really do? But I will, 85% of this Mercedes has been done by me, you know? And it's been nice, it's been a learning curve, because it is such a unique car. So back to the hunt, we found a couple 190Es, they're all stock, all beautiful, one was a dark blue, one was a white, one was actually a green that was used to go to Berlin Classic back in 20, let's say 14, 15 era. I'm actually not too sure. But uh, yeah, they used to pop out the Berlin Classic. They had custom three piece wheels that were converted from the stock wheels. Uh, it was on bags. It had like a satin green to it, two tone color with a white at the bottom. It was beautiful, but they stripped it. It was stock, it was slammed. It was a 190E. It needed love, it needed some uh, attention on the inside. I don't remember the asking price to be honest, but there were so many other cars on the market at the time where it didn't justify me settling for something that needed a lot more work compared to spending one or two more thousand and getting something that was bone stock, like clean as fuck. So I went and saw another car, it was another 190E, and it also had a AMG kit on it. That is one where I kind of regret letting it go. I think it was a little bit over 10,000, but it was okay, like I didn't mind. It was the champagne color on, I want to say black, but I feel like it would be like a tan, but I feel like if it was just like a, the brown tan, I would have snagged it, but I don't think it was. So it had the full AMG kit, it had the wing, uh, not the, like the three piece wing, but it had like the 190E wing over. It had the rear bumper, the side skirts, had an AMG front. Oh, there's a ladybug on it. But um, the front bumper had a crack in it that was pretty bad. Again, at the time, it's kind of stupid of me, but at the time I didn't know anything about these cars, so I didn't know what it would cost to fix a bumper. I didn't know if it was a genuine AMG kit at the time either. I didn't know much about it. I'm pretty sure it was automatic, so it definitely wasn't an AMG car. It would have just been a 190E with an AMG kit on it painted. I believe the guy was Filipino, and you know the, the Filipino guys, they, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing with these cars. See that fucking, that red one in the Philippines? Fucking crazy. That's this fucking model. I think it's the, the sedan. And he has the fucking wide body kit on it, got the two fucking pipes going out of it, fucking... You gotta watch that fucking video, that guy's fucking, he knows what he's doing, that's ice. I'm pretty sure I've even talked to him a couple times, to be honest, because there's not that many of us out there, like, with, like, highly modified W124s, like, 
There's the Turbo Bandit guy, rest in peace. There's that fucking W1242J. He has a fucking dope build, he's almost done, or I think he just finished it, you know? He just painted his wide body kit, got some sick ass wheels and shit. Fucking every car has, has a story, I believe is his tag, and I rate that, you know? I'm trying to tell my story as, as we're here today. So back to the car hunt. After that 190E, I decided to pass on it, and then we got into, my dad was kind of getting fed up, to be honest, because I was still getting support from my parents at the time, being 17 years old. Nothing wrong with that, you know, like, as long as, you you know, you can help out in some ways and not be uh, ungrateful for it, let's say. So, and the beauty about it was my sister is coming to that age where she needs to drive. So we needed another car in the family where I wouldn't be taking out, because I was out a lot. Cycle two. A lot of accidents happen over there. That's why I'm listening. I heard a lady scream one time and I almost called 911 because there was an accident and then I heard that unfortunately uh, a young gentleman passed away on a motorcycle and I believe it was that exact day that I was going to call 911. So it was actually scary. So drive safe, count your blessings, you know? So I'm near the end of my search. My father was like, you know, you've already seen like four or five and none of them have satisfied you. You know, let's maybe stop for the time being and just wait it out because we're reaching the end of summer at this point. I think I ended up, I want to say September, end of August, September is when I bought it. So, this was the last absolute car I was allowed to kind of be serious about and bring over. Um, so I went on Auto Trader. That's a very popular trading platform for auto cars in Canada. Kind of like your. I can't even think of any right now. I don't know. Something like Craigslist. Let's go with that. But mostly just strictly auto cars. Uh, so essentially, I'm searching up, you know, 1990s Mercedes, stuff like that, keywords, key tags, because I, I don't know anything about these cars. I don't know their engines, I don't know what they are, like, and it's kind of embarrassing, but a 190E and a 300CE are completely two different chassis. Like, like my fenders will not fit on a 190E. My bumpers will not fit on a 190E. Um, my th and then nothing will fit. They're just, they're, they're just, it doesn't work. Like, so a 190E is a W201 chassis code, and a 300CE, which is an E class, is a, excuse me, W124 chassis code. Just a little knowledge for you guys there, because that does get asked a lot if these fenders can fit on a 190E and it's unless you got money and customization skills they're not going to fit so back to the story again um, I'm on auto trader searching up keywords and I see this black Mercedes and yes this car is black underneath if you didn't know that and I'm really curious to what it looks like underneath to be honest because like it would go fucking so hard in black. But I, I just, I love the Marlboro livery so much that I'm not gonna even question it at this point. But it does need some touch-ups. I'll give it, I'll give it that. So I see this black Mercedes, 1991. So newer than the ones I've been looking at already because everything else has been 80s, you know? Like 85, 86, 87, 88, you know, 89, like that, that era. So I'm like, oh, a 91, damn. And Buddy had three pictures. I still have them on my phone. Uh, one was a front low prof, <coughs> excuse me. One was a front low profile shot. So kind of like from this angle. And another one was uh, the interior seats. And another one was the rear. And I'm just like, damn, like this, this is, this looks beautiful. This guy's in my city. He lives not even 10 minutes from me. It's 
So I get in contact with him. I don't remember if it was a phone number or an email. He was an older gentleman. So I, I contacted him and I said, hey, like, uh, I'm interested in purchasing your Mercedes. And again, like, I don't know anything about this. I don't, I don't know nothing. Like, I, I've, I've been looking at 190Es for the past, I don't know, let's say two, three months. So I stumble upon W124 Coupe, and I'm just like, they make them in coupes? I didn't know that. Like, it's just, I had no idea. Like, it's just unheard of to me, to, me, to be honest. So, I message him, he gets back to me. I don't want to say the same day, but that week, I get him to come to my area, my house. And oh my God, when I tell you that when this Mercedes, kind of like this weather, maybe a little bit more evening-ish vibe, but this thing rolled down the street and it just pulled in and I was, and he had all the windows down, everything, all four. So I don't have V pillars. So when it came rolling down, 15 inch wheels, you know, big profile tires, stock body, clean black it's called obsidian black so you can already hear from the name like that's a pretty dark color it comes rolling in and i'm just like holy fuck like this is the car this is the tupac biggie smallest fucking car coming down and like i don't know i was like lost for words i'm like this is beautiful like, this is gorgeous i'm looking at my parents and i'm just like what do you think? Like this is this looks fucking. And we're not even outside yet. We're, I'm looking through the window right now, and I'm just like, wow! Like this is a fucking masterpiece rolling down, and coming up my driveway. Again, I gotta make sure it's recording so we don't lose where we are. Okay. So. I come outside with my parents, and this older gentleman comes out. He would have been at least in his 70s, I would say. 70s, big guy, big guy for sure. Six, six five, 200 pounds easily. Well, all white hair, white beard. Comes out, I don't even remember his name at the moment. Kind of disrespectful to be honest, I'm sorry. It would, it would come to me, I have your contact information. I also have you on the, on the record. Um, beautiful gentleman, you know, we talk, you know, if you know me, I'm a negotiator at heart, you do not want to get into a bargaining match with me, it gets to the point where you want to walk away, you know, but that's life, life's a bargain, you never know what deal you're going to get, so you got to make the best of it talked to this guy, I took some pictures, I drove it up around the street and around, and it was, it was beautiful, beautiful, no rips, no nothing, it had 169,000 kilometers on it, so that's low for a 30 year old car, that's fantastic. There, there was no way I was letting it go from my hands that day, so it just got to the point where I needed it, you know, I wanted it, that's that's it, this is, this is the one, no more searching, I paid the guy a down payment, I think it was a weekend, so on Monday when uh, the, the transportation ministry place opens up, we met each other there, he gave me all the information, I went inside, I got plates, and that was it, I shook his hand. And I was a proud owner of a 1991 Mercedes-Benz 300 CE 3.0 inline six. That's another thing, I had no idea it was an inline six either. Like I'm telling you, I really didn't know much about cars. Like I was young, I was 17. And this was, and that was like my first year of college too. So like I was transitioning from like uh, first semester getting in with the CLA to second semester now driving a classic car 
Uh, I lived on campus, but at the same time, like driving an old car back and forth a lot from home and there really does its toll. So now you kind of see where we're getting at, where I went with why Marlboro, because this would have never worked with a CLA 250. I wouldn't be Tony's Classics without the C without without all that stuff happening in that entire journey of me mentioning because me going overseas because oh I guess like you guys don't know but Marlboros are banned in Canada you cannot get Marlboros in Canada so that's also something that was huge is when I went overseas to Lebanon people were smoking Marlboros I loved how the design looked of it uh, you know like there's always the, 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 the race car history, you know, like Formula One, Anton Senna, Michael Schumacher, like everyone, like there's a history behind it. Like, yes, it is a tribute to that era, but at the same time, it has so much more meaning to why I picked Marlboro than just me liking F1 cars. Like this reminds me of Lebanon. When I look at it, I think of home. I think of my cousins, I think of my family, I think of people that have passed away, people that are now adults that when I was there, they were kids and babies that now have their own kids and their own wives and their own families. And I just get to drive this car and still feel like I'm there with them. I know it's a little much, but that is exactly kind of where I'm at and why this car was the perfect vehicle where when I was there I wanted it in Canada and I got it which made me have a piece of Lebanon with me and then just adding the Marlboro wrap onto that timeless machine just made it like exponentially like like a favorite icon in the community in Worldwide, honestly, like I've t I've talked to some of you in crazy countries that like I'm very thankful for and I would have never thought my reach would have gone there. So I really take pride and joy when I take videos and clips and I post this and I get to show off what I've accomplished in five years. Like I, a lot of you say, you know, wrapping wheels and blah 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 awards and shit but this car is so much more than just wrapping wheels the only the only company that believed in me when i was coming up as a youngin in, in the car community was raptors yes raptors i contacted and go check your dms if some of you are watching this I probably, con you gotta take in, this was in 2017. I contacted majority of the rap shops that do vinyl print in the GTA to do this idea on this car. The numbers I got back were astronomical for a 17 year old to comprehend, to justify, to put on a car that at the time was only worth like 10 grand. So if you, people go look back, and if you, I know prices change all the time, but like, there was companies quoting me five grand, seven grand, like, warranty on top, PPF on top, like, no one really saw what my vision was going forward in the future, where I'd be today, what I wanted to do for the community all throughout the years, what I'm willing to do for the community, going forward in my lifetime with with my collection and at the same time I'm only 23 guys like as a 17 year old at the time contacting all these big companies with hopes and dreams to achieve this is something crazy but Raptors saw it as an opportunity for all of us to grow as family they, they brought me into their facilities and showed me, you know, what they're doing, how many they've been open. And I only think they had five locations at the time, maybe not even. Now they have 
12 or 15 locations, like something like that, worldwide. Like they got South Africa, Miami, like that's crazy. When I knew them, like I was going into like a little shop in like Oakville and then I got recommended to Toronto and then boom. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Toronto Raptors, but they're booling. And those guys saw my vision. They saw what I wanted to do. They, they believed in me, you know? And I wasn't Tony's classics at the time. I was some 17 year old with a dream to, you know, have something that brought me joy. And I, you know, I told them that like, look, like I want to document my journey throughout the years of this vehicle, going to as many shows as I can, going to, you know, as many cruises, as many like charity events, you name it, you know, like I, I have been there, Ooh, that little bug. but I have been there. I've done it. Like I'm almost like, it's funny because someone once referred to me as a uh, super fan nav. And if you go, guys don't know who that is, he is the guy that since I believe, don't quote me on this, I could be wrong, but from my knowledge, I, I think someone told me when he came to Canada, he loves basketball and loves the Raptors. And that's, that's funny, because Raptors, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so he goes to every single game. I, don't, I think it's just home games. I'm not sure if it's away games, but he has courtside seats to every single game that he has made a name for himself for that. And someone actually referred to me as him, was like, you are basically the super fan nav of the car community. I see you at every show possible. So it's just, it's, it's nice, you know, like, and these shows are pricey for us cars, you know, like all of us just aren't super well off that like, you know, we work regular jobs and most of these shows cost like 90 to $140 just to get in and park up and to let the public come and see what you've done, you know, like, so you've already spent all that money on this hard work building your car, you know, dumping funds on it, you know, your pride and joy. And then you have to pay even more now on top. Like back then it used to be a little bit cheaper, but obviously venues, food, like, you know, like electricity, washrooms, like all that shit costs money for like uh, people hosting meets. And don't get me wrong. I know what that's like. I've tried to host, I've hosted a couple like if it's if it's actually a proper meet, it costs money, like upwards of five, ten thousand, maybe even even more sometimes, you know? Like that could be light for depends on the event you're trying to do. So Yeah. And I honestly if nobody gave me that 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 push I was not gonna pay five grand, seven grand as a 17 year old to wrap a car. My parents would smack me. They'd be like, what are you doing? You're spending like half the money that you spent on the car on a wrap. And I didn't have suspension done. I didn't have a body kit done. I didn't have, I had some cool ass BBS wheels though. They were wraps, but I didn't give a fuck. They were fucking ice. The issue, the issue was with my suspension. So when I, they, they were fat, they were like, 18 by like 10 in the rear or some something stupid something stupid where the poke was just fucking Ridiculous, you know So essentially I sold that shit and then Raptors Raptors gave me the deal of a lifetime that a 17 year old could afford and pursue his dream you know my first ever show with this Marlboro livery. I didn't have a body kit, wheel suspension, nothing, just a livery. And it was kind of funny because my buddy took me to the show. Cause I, again, I wasn't popping like, uh, like you know, like how I, I'm trying to create now because of how much I put into it. I only like had a page of you know places I'd go with the cool old Mercedes. But when I got the wrap, I went to this meet called. I want to say like Sub Subi Nation, Subaru Nation or something like that. And it was it was pretty cool because they had a category that was uh, best non-Subaru. 
And I, I still have it, because that was actually my first ever award that I've ever won, and it's like a plaque. And um, I will always be grateful because there wasn't many non-Subarus at the meet. There was only maybe five to ten of us. But it, it was a pretty low-key meet considering it was a Subaru-only meet. But, you know, they, they, they still had that category open for other people. So I, I have the picture of me standing beside it with the award and everything. And I'm just a young kid, just like Marlboro, fresh wrap, like, but nothing else done to the car. Nothing else done. But... You know, from there on, like, that's when, like, people start saying, like, wow, you know, like, wrapping wheels. But that's not the case. I didn't like the idea of spending so much money and, you know, motor, body kit, slamming it, you know, like, because that takes time, that takes energy, that takes resources. I did the complete opposite, so I, Raptors gave me that motivation, it kind of comes back to them, because they gave me the sponsorship deal of a lifetime where, again, a 17 year old could afford it and be happy and go out and rep this beautiful livery on his 30 year old classic Mercedes, you know? So when they gave me that sponsorship deal, I didn't just like stop there. That opened the door for me to essentially get more sponsors and that also means more media focus and hype on myself and the vehicle. So that's essentially why we switched out of Marlboro Benz to Tony's Classics because I'm not trying to grow myself and then get my page taken away from me because of the name. It would just be stupid. Um, so I started from rap. I went rap, body kit, wheels, suspension. What I what I do kind of recommend is maybe doing suspension before wheels because I did have that gap in the fender which I didn't really like. But um, the homie, uh, sick ride, very well known. Very beautiful vehicles. Check them out. Couple, couple fantastic Mercedes himself. He, uh, we were at a meet one time at a uh, Dairy Queen, and uh, we were just, ch you know, chatting, shooting the shit. And I don't even know if you'll remember this or not. Uh, if you do, that'd be cool. But uh, we were looking at my Mercedes, and I'm telling him like, oh man, like everything's expensive for this fucking car. Like, if I want coilovers, like it's minimum two grand, and I think I was. Uh, I think I was probably 18 at this point, you know, and still, you know, like, I'm a cheap bastard. I'm not going to fucking start throwing cash at this car while I'm still in fucking flight school. You know how much money flight school fucking is? Every time I can fucking go on a flight, I got to drop $300. You know how many times I got to fly? I have to rack up fucking 200 fucking hours to get my commercial license minimum, minimum. So yeah, if you end up doing the math on that shit or you go look at how much it costs to fucking rent a plane for an hour, do the math on 200 hours. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I didn't have time to be throwing cash at this thing. But Raptors gave me that motivation to go out and get sponsors, get ideas. But then that night when I was talking to Sick Ride, he looks at me and he's like, homie, you know? And I don't recall this too much because it was four years ago at this point. He's like, homie, what are you waiting for, you know? You built it to be like this much and all you're missing is that suspension, you know? He's like, once you drop it, everything's gonna change for you, you know? The amount of people are gonna be looking at it when you drop it and like the amount of awards and the amount of whatnot. And honestly, he was right because I haven't put the vehicle on air suspension yet and I am going to shout out to my sponsor on air. But this is the car slammed on those exact suspension kit that sick ride told me to buy and I don't know why I needed some fancy ass coilovers I'm not gonna mention no company names but I don't know why I needed fancy coilovers when I bought this kit that did the job for half the price and I'm still stancing a Marlboro Benz you know like 
is beautiful. Like it's really beautiful for what I paid. And I am so grateful for him giving me that, that talk and that motivation. Cause that night I went home and I placed the order. I, I, I had enough waiting, you know, like, and I didn't even wait for it to get to my house. When I saw that it was at the facility in my city, I drove to the facility because at the end of the day, they said, sorry, we couldn't deliver your package. So I went to the facility before closing time and my box was sitting there because it was too heavy. So it was just sitting there on the ground. And I was like, all right, guess I'm taking it home. And you know, a couple of weeks later, bam, we fucking slammed it. And I don't even have my fenders rolled or anything. So that's like the beauty part as well. Let me just make sure we're recording one more time. So, so, to sum it up, why Marlboro, this is the perfect fucking car to ever rock a Marlboro livery that's not a fucking F1 car. You cannot tell me on this planet that the Mercedes-Benz W124 300 CE coupe coupe not four door coupe is the most perfect body line makes sense car to ever rock this livery so I really hope you guys enjoyed this first episode slash long podcast slash episode of why Marlboro that's it that's it so I'm hoping for next time to bring some of you on get you there I'm gonna start asking you guys what's going on with your whips so you can learn a little bit about your story and uh what made you do what you did to your car so if you want to be uh on the podcast comment below subscribe uh, dm me on instagram that's huge dm me on instagram and uh let's make it happen because this could be good i want to hear everybody's story i want to share share the love we'll, we'll go into some more and i'm telling you guys this has been a five-year journey you gotta understand, like, it was a long video, but I wanted you guys to have uh, an understanding of why I chose this livery, on why I chose this vehicle, and kinda how my story started and where it's going. So, we're gonna leave it at that. You can leave some quotes, you know. Just day by day, guys. Day by day, like there's really not much else you could do. Find a car, find a dream, find something to hold on to, and uh, that's it. That's it. Thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm excited to see who's next. Let's see if we can get some of those uh, those drift guys to come in, you know, like LZ's team or something. Stay tuned. Cheers.